Hello, welcome to lesson eight, exercise one. Here we're going to get some practice with uh, the break statement. So we're going to write a program that asks a user to input their favorite letter of the alphabet. Really, we're going to ask them to input their favorite capital letter of the alphabet. And then we're asked to use a for loop uh, with a break statement to loop through all the letters A to Z, searching for a match for what the user input. And then when we find that match, we're going to output the following. Uh, for example, if the user types in a capital A, then we're going to output your favorite letter is A, comma, which is letter number one. If they type in Y, then we'll say your favorite letter is Y, which is letter number 25, and so on. So what we're trying to do is take user input, and we want to, uh, we're pulling that in as a character, and we want to loop through all the letters A to Z until we find a match, and whatever uh, whenever we find a match, we want to output to the user what they typed in and what corresponding number of the alphabet, uh, or number of that letter is in the alphabet. And there are 26 letters in the alphabet, so we're going to loop through all of them. Now, you know, it's one of those things. You could do this all by hand. You can just list all the letters of the alphabet and just kind of compare uh, one by one, but that would lead to very ugly code. We want to use loops to simplify our code and make it readable. So the way I'm doing it here, it might look different than what you did, but we're reading in a single character, so we're going to use the throws statement for the IO exception, as we need to always do when we read a single character using system.in.read. Uh, we have a few variables um, created here, and, and you'll see why we need them in a second. The first one is the input that we're reading from the user. That letter is going to be stored here. We're going to be looping through all the letters in the alphabet, so I have a loop control variable. Usually we call it i, and so that's what I've done here. And then I have another character called letter test, and I'm setting that equal to capital A. And you'll see why in a second, but what, what we're going to end up doing is um, incrementing this to go from A to B to C to D to E and so on, uh, comparing as we go. Now, we want to output to the screen, enter your favorite capital letter of the alphabet, and then we want to read that in. So we use system.in.read, which remembers reads it in as a uh, as a uh, integer, which that we then convert to a character, right? And when we convert to a character, then what gets stored in this variable called input is the actual character. In other words, we type a capital C in, and the capital C is what's stored in this variable. That's why it's labeled as a character variable. Now we need to do our magic. We need to somehow loop through all the letters of the alphabet. There are many ways to do it. This is the way I choose to do it. So what I'm going to do is set up a loop. I'm going to start at i is equal to 1, i is an integer, i less than or equal to 26, and increment each time through the loop. So I'm going to go each time through the loop, i is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And if nothing else happens, the loop will stop whenever i uh, tries to go to 27. 26 will be the highest number it can achieve in this loop here. So we've got the curly braces here. From here all the way to here is what is happening every time we go through this for loop. Now we need to do some kind of comparison. So we do an if, and we say, okay, if the letter that was typed in by the user is equal to what we called letter test up here, which we initially set equal to A, right? If that happens, then we want to break out of this loop. Now we talked about the break statement. That's the point of this lesson. Well, if nothing happens, if no match is found, then we're going to keep going 26 times through this loop. But basically we want to keep incrementing, incrementing, incrementing the loop until we find a match. And at the moment we find a match, we want to blow out of this loop because we're done at that point. So we're testing each time through the loop. Is, the, is what the user typed equal to letter test, which initially is set to A? If it's not, let's say they type R. Well, first time through, uh, whatever they type in was R is equal to, initially we set this variable equal to A, so this will fail, and we'll come down to the next statement, which is to increment letter test. Now remember, this is a character variable, character variable up here. Um, even though it's a character, you can increment character variables. We've discussed that before. What just ends up happening is you go to the next letter in the, in the alphabet. So from capital A, we'll go capital B, capital C, capital D, and so on. So what this line does here is every time we go through the loop, the test that we're going to compare against is going to increment from A to B to C to D to E and so on. And because we're running the loop 26 times, it's going to stop when our final test will compare against the, the letter Z. So you can see this is where the magic is happening. We're looping through 26 times, 
comparing against a new letter every time, which going through the alphabet A to Z, and as soon as a match is made between what the user types in and the test that we're comparing against, when that happens, we break out. All right? And then finally, we break out of the for loop, which means program execution continues down here. And so we will print out the following statement. Your favorite letter is, and we're just printing out what the user has already typed into the input, comma, which is letter, and then what letter is it? Well, whenever we break out of the loop, whatever the value of I was is the letter, is the corresponding letter of the alphabet. In other words, if, um, if we break out whenever, if the user typed in the letter C, then we've only gone through the loop three times because this letter test increments from A to B to C that would make it go from one to two to three. Wherever we break out of this loop, whatever value of this loop variable was at at the moment we break out of the loop, that's the, the corresponding letter of the alphabet. So we're just, we're, we set our loop up to correspond to that. So when we bust out of it, whatever the value of I is, is the letter of the alphabet. So let's see if this, if this works. Let me go ahead and run this guy. Let's go ahead and save it first, what that's about. Enter your favorite capital letter. Let's start with something easy. We type in a capital A and we hit enter. Your favorite letter is A, which is letter one. So when we come through here, the loop only goes one time. It checks to see if what I input, which was A, is equal to letter test, which is also initialized to A. So at this moment, we break out of the loop and we print this out. Your favorite letter is A, which is letter one, because the loop only really went one time, and so I was equal to one. Now, if we run this again and say, uh, my favorite capital letter is C, it says your favorite letter is C, which is letter three, because we go through this three times. We try it, this is gonna compare, the input which we typed was C is gonna compare with A, that's how we initialized it, but then we're going to go through the loop a couple of times. Eventually I'm going to compare and it's going to match uh, with the letter C. I'm going to break out, I'm going to print this out, and it only takes three loops to make that happen. So you can kind of play around with this and type in the letter Z, you'll get 26 down here, put the letter Q, you get the letter 17 down here. So there are many, many ways to do this. I'm confident that if you've done this yourself, yourself that um, you're going to probably figure out a slightly different way to do it. Don't worry about that. As long as you're getting the right answer, the right result, and you're confident in your logic, then that's all that really matters in programming. So follow me on through this course. Build your skills. It's very, very important to try these yourself before looking at my solution. It's very easy to see what I'm showing you here and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but it's a little harder when you're sitting with a blank canvas and figure out how to do it. So you just need to practice, and that's the way to learn how to program.